Welcome to Electron Line, and now for something quite challenging. Let's say we have a wedge shape right here, where the left side makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal, and the right side makes a 45 degrees with the horizontal. There's no friction here on these two sides, and there's a rod that rests on the two sides. Since there's no friction between the rod and the side here, and there's no friction between the rod and the side there, that the force between the side and the rod has to be perpendicular, has to be normal to the surface. So this is the force A pushing back at the, on the rod's end over here, and force B pushing back at the rod's end over there. The center mass is right here in the middle of the rod, and supposedly in this situation, the center mass will be directly over the bottom point right there. That's what we're supposed to show here. Show that the position of the center mass is directly above point C. Also, and the angle between that and force B is equal to phi. The angle between the rod and the horizontal, that would be equal to 30 degrees, or I should say that should be equal to theta minus 30 degrees. This angle right here is the alternate interior angle from this angle here, so this is 30 degrees, so theta minus 30 gives me this difference here. This angle right in here, let me put it over here, is equal to theta, the full angle, minus 30 degrees. That means that this angle in here, this angle, must also be theta minus 30 degrees because this angle must equal this angle here. Since this line is perpendicular to the vertical and the rod here is perpendicular to that line, the angle between those two must equal the angle between those two. Also realizing that the angle between the vertical and F sub B must be 45 degrees because this side is at an angle of 45 degrees. If we call this equal to phi, then phi is equal to 45 degrees minus theta minus 30 degrees. But we'll get to that in just a moment. What we're going to try to do is find the angle theta here by picking our pivot point at A and using the concept that the sum of all the torque about point A must add up to zero. The sum of all the torques about point A must add up to zero. Zero is equal to First we take, we don't have to worry about F sub A because that goes right through the pivot point, so there's no torque caused by F sub A. Then we take Mg, since that will give us a clockwise torque, that's a negative torque, minus Mg times the distance, that's uh, the distance on the pivot point to the, the, I should say the distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point, let's call this D1, and we'll worry about what D1 is later. So that would be equal to D1. And then we have a second force, which is F sub B. That would be plus F sub B. The reason why it's plus, that'll give us a counterclockwise torque. That's a positive torque. And now we have to multiply that times the length of the rod, times the length of the rod, times the cosine of the angle between the direction of the force and the perpendicular to the rod, which is the angle phi. That's cosine of the angle phi. We'll find out what phi is in just a moment. Next, we need to find d1. d1 is this distance right here, which is equal to the distance to the center mass times, times the cosine of this angle right there. And that's the angle of theta minus 30 degrees. Plugging that in, 0 is equal to minus mg times d1 D1 is a distance to the center mass, which is equal to half the length of the rod, L divided by 2, times the, since it's adjacent side to the angle, the cosine of theta minus 30 degrees, times the cosine of theta minus 30 degrees, plus the force at B, times the length of the rod, times the cosine of phi, and phi would be 40 to 45 degrees, minus theta minus 30 degrees. That's the cosine of 45 degrees minus theta minus 30 degrees. 
Simplifying that by noticing that we have an L in both terms and that's set equal to zero, so divide both sides by L. And then cleaning that up a little bit more, zero is equal to minus mg times one half times the cosine of theta minus 30 degrees plus F sub B times the cosine of, so the cosine of 45 minus a minus 30, that's 75 degrees minus theta. At this point, what we need to do here is we need to get rid of the F sub B. We need to find out this, the magnitude of F sub B in terms of mg to be able to get rid of the mg because ultimately what we're trying to do is solve for the angle theta. So looking at the, the three forces here, we know that the sum of the three forces must add up to zero victorially because everything is in equilibrium. If I draw the force mg here straight down, let's call this the force mg, so F sub A is a little steeper like this, that's F sub A, and there's F sub B, F sub A and MG. Now about the angles, this here must be a 30 degree angle, this here must be a 45 degree angle, 30 plus 45 is 75, and the three together must add up to 180, that means this must be a 105 degree angle. That's one, let's see here if that's correct, that's 150 plus 30, 180. So those are the relative angles. Now using the law of sines, I can relate FB, FA to MG. That means I can write that MG divided by the sine of the angle straight across, sine of 105 degrees, is equal to F sub B divided by the sine of 30 degrees, which is equal to F sub A divided by the sine of 45 degrees. Which means I can solve for F sub B. F sub B is equal to mg times the sine of 30 degrees divided by the sine of 105 degrees. This gives me F sub B in terms of, M, in terms of mg, which allow us to get rid of mg and then allow us to solve for theta. 30, take the sine of that, that's 0 0.5, divided by 105, take the sine of that, is equal to, F sub B is equal to 0 0.518 times M sub G. Let's go ahead and plug that, plug that in here and also find the trigonometric identities of the difference of the angles right there. 0 is equal to minus 1 half MG times the cosine of theta times the cosine of 30 degrees, and that would be plus the sine of theta times the sine of 30 degrees, plus F sub B, which is equal to this many times mg, plus 0 0.518 m times g, times the cosine of 75 degrees, times the cosine of theta, plus the sine of 75 degrees, times the sine of theta. Notice at this point, I can get rid of the m times g because the whole thing is set equal to zero, so this cancels out, this cancels out right there. And then, to get rid of the cosine, I can divide both sides of the equation by the cosine of theta. So one divided by the cosine of theta, this will get rid of the cosine of theta and leave me with the sine divided by cosine, which is equal to the tangent of theta. 0 is equal to minus 0 0.5 times, the cosines disappear, I get the cosine of 30 degrees, plus the sine of 30 is 1 half, that would be 0 0.5 times the tangent of theta, plus 0 0.518 times, the cosine disappears, that's the cosine of 75 degrees, plus the sine of theta divided by cosine, that's a 0 well, let's see here, that would be equal to the sine of 75 degrees times the tangent of theta. All right, we're getting there. Now you realize we only have the tangent of theta that will make it possible for us to solve for theta. Adding up all the constants. So we have a constant here, we have a constant there. Adding that up, we take 30, take the cosine of 30, and multiply times 0.5, and put a negative sign in front of that. And then we're going to add that to the product of these two, plus 0.518 
times 75, take the cosine of that, equals, and we get 0 is equal to minus 0 0.299 plus, now we add up all the tangent terms together, 0 0.5 times, or negative 0 0.5 times a positive 0 0.5, that's a 0 0.25 with a negative in front of it, and then we add to that the 0.518 times the sine of 75 degrees, plus 0.518 times 75, take the sine of that, equals, that would be plus 0 0.5, 250 times the tangent of theta. All right, now we're getting close, because now we can write that the tangent of theta is equal to 0 0.299 divided by 0 0.250, which means that theta is equal to the arctangent of 0 0.299 divided by 0 0.250. And let's do that. 0.299 divided by 0.25 equals, take the inverse tangent of that, and I get 50.1 degrees. So now we have found the position of the rod is such that the angle here will be 50.1 degrees. Our next challenge is to prove that the center mass of the rod is directly above that apex right there at point C. To do that, we can say that D1 must equal this distance right here, which let's call this distance D2. D2 will run from point B to here, and so this distance then must equal that distance. If we can prove that, then we know that the center mass is directly above point C. The first point should be relatively straightforward. To find D1, we go back over here, and we had an equation for D1 somewhere. Let's see here. D1 right here was equal to L divided by 2 times the cosine of this. So D1 was equal to 1 half L times the cosine of theta minus 30 degrees. Now that we found theta, which is equal to 50.1 degrees, we can say 50.1 minus 30 would be 20.1 degrees. D1 is equal to 1 half L times the cosine of 50.1 minus 30, which is 20.1 degrees. That gives us a value for D1. Let's go ahead and calculate that. 20.1, take the cosine of that, and multiply that times 0.5. And we get D1 is equal to 0 0.4695 times the length of the rod. Now we have to find out what D2 is equal to, and if we do, it better be equal to 0 0.4695 times the length of the rod. And if that's the case, the center mass is directly above point C. To do that, let's see here, we're trying to find this distance here. We could probably find this distance first. Let's call this distance x. That's a distance from there to there. And we can do that because, again, we're assuming that this would be half the length of the rod because the distance from there to there, center mass was the length of the rod, so this must be half the length of the rod. So let's find out what this distance is equal to. I have this triangle right here. Let me draw the triangle right here. So I have this triangle here. Go straight down. We have this distance here. And the angles... Let's see if we find the angles. Uh, the angle here would be 90 plus 20.1. This angle would be 110.1 degrees. Again, it's a 90 degree angle plus this distance right here, which is 50.1 minus 30. Add that to 90, you get 110.1 degrees. This here is L divided by 2 because we're finding this is center mass. So we're going to find this distance here, and we can do that using the law of sine. This is the distance x, and L over 2, the angle over here, must be 45 degrees. We can say then that L over 2 divided by the sine of 45 degrees is equal to x divided by the sine of 110.1 degrees. Should be a 1 right there. Which means that x is equal to... 0.5L times the sine of 110.1 degrees divided by a sine of 45 degrees. 
They'll give us a value for x, and from that value we can find d2. Let's see if we're correct here. 110.1, take the sine of that, multiply times 0.5, and divide by the sine of 45 degrees, and we get x is equal to 6.6, whoop, no, not 6, try it again, 0.664L. Now from that we should be able to find d2, because d2 is equal to x, that's the hypotenuse, times the cosine of 45 degrees. That means we take 0.664L times the cosine of 45 degrees, and that gives us value for d2, which better be equal to d1, times 45, take the cosine of that, equals, and we get d2 is equal to 0.4695L, Oop, that's a 5 there, since this is the exact same distance as this, they are equal to each other, that means the center mass must be directly over point C. And that's how we showed that first of all, we were able to find the angle, and second of all, we were able to find that the center mass is directly above that point C. And that's how it's done.